Identifying nested elements with Windows application driver. Working with nested elements in Windows application driver is really easy than compared to code or UI testing. As you can see, there are cases where we might need to identify an element based on the parents element. For instance, if you could see here, there is an item, list item, 89 plus 36 is equal to 125. So if I want to identify what is this particular value 125, then you can see that this particular element is actually sitting in a nested element situation, something like this. So in order to identify the element which is within a particular element, in web applications we can use XPath, something like we can directly nest into that element and then identify the element, or we can also use the exact unique identifier of this particular element. But in our case, if let's say this particular element, the list item is something which is not unique, it has same kind of attribute for all the different elements and it is sitting like a different hierarchy in different form within the application then in order to identify these kinds of situation we need to go with the nested element identification properties nested identifications can be done something like this if you remember in our previous video we use this windows driver dot find element by name and we use this name something like this and we identified the windows elements but again, if you're going to go with the nested element identification, as I said in our previous videos of this course, we have something called as Fluent Interface, and this Fluent Interface will help to nest the element identification, something like this. As you can see, here we have this Windows driver .find element by name, and this is the name. And then we also nest it to identify using its accessibility ID as this. So this is the way of nesting the elements. But the thing is, if you nest the element something like this, then the return type of the find element by accessibility ID is going to be Appium web element instead of Windows element. As you recall, the whole Windows element is actually built on the top of Appium web element, and Appium web element by itself is going to be a iWeb element and remote web elements. These are all coming under the same parents here. So that's why the return type of the find element by accessibility ID is basically Appium web element. So let's quickly start nesting it and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. All right, so this is the same project that we have been working so long in our course. And this time we are going to identify the nesting operation. So we are basically going to identify the history if it is the one which we're looking for. So if you could see here, we could see that the result is 69. But let's say if I want to identify the history operation, something like what is the actual value for the particular element, something like this. So if I do 56 plus 7 is equal to 63 here. So this is the history that we need to identify. So in order to identify this element, we can make use of our inspect, as you can see here. So this guy is kind of helpful once again. So as you can see, we have an option where you can use this watch focus. So if I click this watch focus, now it will start identifying the element. So if I click this guy, and this is the element that I'm looking for. So you can see there is a history tab item, and I can click this. So there is a list, and there is this 56 plus 7 is equal to 63. So if I want to get the text 63 from here, from this history, you can see this is actually sitting under this particular nested element. So you can see what is the text of it. So there is a result text block, which is actually sitting under list, this one. So this is basically sitting into the history uh, label, as you can see here. I guess the name is identified using its history. So we can identify the element by name as history. And then we can identify this particular text, this one, using this expression text block. So if I want to get this particular value, the result test block, which is 63, you can read it from here as well, right? So let's quickly see how we can identify this. So as I said, the first thing we need to identify is the history, which is nothing but the history label. So I'm just going to copy this guy, history label, and let's go to our page object model uh, that we have written. So I can just go over here, Calci page, and here I'm going to start writing the code. So basically, I'm just going to write Windows element txt result history. And then I'm going to use the Lambda expression of the Windows driver, find element by name. And the name, as I said, it's going to be history. So I'm just going to identify that. And within this history, 
we have this result block right so the result block is actually going to be the result that we are looking for so if i go to this particular uh, windows identifier and you can see that this guy is currently disappearing the reason is because it's currently looking for the visual studio so every time you perform any action in any one of the windows it's going to start identifying that particular element here right so if i click this 63 here see it is now showing this one now to stop the identification every time you can go here and you can remove this watch focus so that it won't uh, keep on searching for the elements within uh, the screen that you are trying to do so it's kind of locked and i'm just looking for the 63 so this is the result block result text block so i'm just gonna uh, copy this to identify this result test block you're going to use this find element by accessibility id and then you need to put the result text block and now you can see that we are getting an error here it says cannot implicitly convert the appium web element to windows element because it is not windows element so what you need to do is you need to change the windows element to what is called as appium web element and again, you need to add the reference for the Appium web element here. That's it. So this way, this particular element can be identified. And now you can ask me that this is an Appium web element, but we are working on a Windows element. How does it work? Again, everything is built on the top of Appium. So Windows element by itself is an Appium web element, and everything is working on JSON wire protocol. So as you can see, the server that we are running here is basically and web server which is listening what's really happening there so it will work technically so now that we have this particular thing and we can get this particular result so instead of get result that we got last time so it was like display is this particular result right so let me change this to internal string get history so that's going to return me the txt result history dot text so this way it's going to return me 63 and we need to call this method in our uh, step definitions so instead of this particular format text that we have before i'm just going to change this to so this is the actual which is going to be 63 is equal to result there you go so now that we're going to have like pretty much the same thing here uh, let me make it to string so that it compares correctly I'm gonna save it and then I'm just gonna run it let's see what's gonna happen so it should open the calculator and do things for me all right it opened the calculator oops we got a failure here so let's quickly see what is the problem so if I go to the test here oops I guess I need to change the get result to get history because it's not result anymore i forgot to change that i'm just gonna save it and i'm gonna run this again expected is 69 but was 63 i guess we made an intentional mistake here to show the failing result in our previous video we made it to 69 and that's why it is 69 so I'm just gonna run this so as you can see this time it is actually working fine as expected so it is opening the calculator and it is entering the value for us and it's also returning 63 and the test got passed which is really cool so this is how you can identify the nested element here so you can just go here to the calculator page and you can see that with just this particular line of code you can identify the element in a nested fashion so that's it guys this is the power of windows application driver in our next video we'll see even further like how we can leverage the power of windows application driver to automate windows applications thank you